moving to Portland and checking out the suburbs? Well, in this video, we're gonna take a look at Sherwood. Sherwood is a beautiful suburb. It's a little bit further away. It's about as far southwest in the Portland metro area as you can get, but bottom line, a lot of people ask me, would you ever live in Sherwood? My answer to them, sure would. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem with the Home Team Brokers coming to you from Sherwood, Oregon today. If this is your first time to the channel living in Oregon and you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. We talk to people all the time who are moving to Portland, relocating to Oregon, and as real estate professionals, we love to help with that process. So if that's you, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video and schedule a Zoom call with us. Either way, we would love to help with your move to the Portland area. All right, so Sherwood has one of the more unique offerings when it comes to just the overall environment that you're living in, in the Portland metro area. You're on the furthest tip to the southwest of the metro area, so you have a lot of rural area that you're surrounded by, but the accessibility up into Portland suburbs uh, that are a little bit closer to the city and to the city itself uh, is pretty good. Uh, you're probably looking at you know, maybe a 45 minute drive up into downtown Portland, depending on the time of day. Um, and, and especially because if you're going Highway 99, even if it's relatively clear, you're gonna be hitting traffic lights pretty often, uh, you know, taking that route up. You can also go over east into Tualatin, which is really neighboring uh, and, and touching borders with Sherwood to the east. And Tualatin is right on Interstate 5, so you can go over Tualatin Sherwood Road and get uh, onto I-5 and go up north into the city. Um, down to the south, kind of southwest, uh, you get into Newburgh. Um, and just west of Sherwood, really north and west, you have a lot of wine country in there and it's very rural. Sherwood itself is a really picturesque suburb and it really has a very suburban, suburbia type feel. I think in a lot of ways, it kind of feels like if you've ever seen the movie, The Truman Show a little bit, everything is just totally idyllic and what you would imagine or picture when somebody says suburbia or a suburb. And I don't mean that with any negative connotation whatsoever. In fact, it's really quiet, really peaceful. Just driving through these neighborhoods in Sherwood, you feel really safe. Um, so I think it has a lot to offer for families or really anybody looking for a little bit more of a laid back, quieter, outside of town type of suburb. Sherwood has some pretty distinct neighborhoods, really kind of separated by older and newer. So you have a lot of development that's taken place in the last 20, maybe 30 years, um, starting in mid to late 90s to early 2000s. Up until now, you still do see some new construction. Part of Sherwood is bumping up against the urban growth boundary but you do have some of Sherwood that extends north into Tigard and east into Tualatin, uh, where you know even Tualatin and Sherwood being so close together, there's some rural space in between them. Most suburbs that are bordering each other in the Portland metro area, there's not really a clear dividing line necessarily, aside from the welcome to or leaving signs you know, from that particular town. Um, everything's kind of built into each other, but Sherwood has a little more room to breathe around it. And so when you're looking at Sherwood specifically, you have this old town downtown area called Smockville and Sherwood was actually incorporated in 1893. So it's a pretty old town. And, you know, there was a time where it was surrounded by, you know, nothing but uh, rural kind of wilderness. Um, you know, you have some mountains to the south and to the east. Again, you have some rolling hills and wine country to the west and to the north. Um, and so you still get a lot of that to this day, but it's built up quite a bit. Um, the Old Town downtown area is actually referred to as Smockville. And the original settlers were a couple with the last name Smock, but nobody liked the name. So eventually they changed it to Sherwood, I think in like 1911 or something like that. Uh, but extending uh, from that Old Town area 
you have uh, an older neighborhood, um, 100 year old homes and even older right there kind of in the downtown area and then extending uh, a little bit to the east, you do have some older kind of mid-century builds. So you have some older neighborhoods, but these are still really nice. These neighborhoods have uh, a little more dramatic elevation change because you start to climb up into the Shehalem Mountains. Closer to Highway 99 on the west side and the east side, you do have some newer development. Uh, and again, still new construction to this day being built up. Highway 99 does split Sherwood, so a lot like Tigard, and Tigard is just the next town north on Highway 99. Uh, so 99 goes right through the middle. Most of town, most of the residential area is on the south and west side of the highway, but on the north and east side of the highway as well, you do have a lot of development. This is where you see a lot more higher concentration of new construction, and this is where the high school is as well, uh, which is a, probably the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful high schools in the Portland metro area. Um, and then extending further beyond up Roy Rogers Road, past the high school and that area, it starts to get pretty rural. You do get some developments off Roy Rogers Road, but you have access to um, some really great wineries. Anywhere you would live on the west side of Portland, um, you do have access to these wineries. Uh, you know, they're relatively close by, maybe 25, 30 minutes. But if you're in Sherwood, you're getting up into this area, you know, 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, depending on how far you're going. But these are really great wineries with a ton of land, a lot of vineyards, but really great little wine tasting rooms. They all have memberships. So that's a really popular thing for, do, uh, for people to do in this area is join a wine club. Some people join two or three or four or five, you know, depending on how much wine you want to buy and how passionate you are about it. But you can also uh, get to these places. Some are kid friendly. Most of them serve food. Most of them have pretty incredible wine. So, you know, think about 10, 15 minutes again on a Saturday, Sunday, or, you know, even on a, an evening, you know, during the week, you can get up, you know, take in some really nice sweeping views and, you know, get a couple of glasses of wine. Uh, it's a really great thing to do. And Sherwood is uniquely placed to be able to access this particular wine country very quickly. Further north of Sherwood, because you are so far west, you can go straight north and get into Aloha and even into Hillsboro. So you do have some other suburbs and areas that you can access on the west side that are a little bit further north. Uh, that is a decent drive as far as the mileage, but it's pretty it's pretty uninterrupted stretch of rural highway or road um, that you can get up into those areas on. Again, you have Highway 99, which can take you north up into Tigard and then into Portland. Or 99, you can go south into Newburgh, which is a great little small town just on the outskirts of the metro area, but really pretty close to a lot of places on the west side there. If you keep going down 99, you can get all the way to Lincoln City. So you can get to the coast in about an hour from Sherwood if you're going to the Lincoln City area. So the coast is really accessible. Um, and even if you wanted to get to the mountain, you can shoot over to Tualatin, get on 205 from I-5, and then you can get up to Mount Hood probably in under 90 minutes, again, depending on time of day and traffic and everything. Uh, but in the immediate area, because you do have so much rural space surrounding it, you have the Shehala Mountains, and then again, this wine country to the north and to the west. Um, there's hiking trails, there's biking paths. Um, there's a lot of great things to get out and do in terms of the outdoors that you have right there on your doorstep. You have the Tualatin River National Wildlife Refuge, which is, which is really cool, really scenic, ton of trails throughout there. So it's definitely a place where you have larger swaths of just uninterrupted and undeveloped land and you can't get that in many 
quote unquote suburbs at such a high volume per capita, um, you know, as you can in Sherwood. So Sherwood has about 20,000 residents, just maybe a little bit under. Uh, one thing that makes Sherwood a really unique area is it has its own school district. So most every suburb in the Portland metro area um, are much larger school districts. You have Portland Public Schools, Beaverton Aloha, um, Tualatin Tigard, and uh, even Lake Oswego you know you have these larger areas with larger school districts which can be good can be bad but either way I, I i would imagine that having a smaller school district for your town you probably have a little more cohesion um, as far as the communication and the involvement too in that school district being a smaller community again right right in the portland metro area uh, but a little more of a small town element when it comes to the school system. So I think there's four or maybe a couple more elementary schools, uh, a middle school and a high school, uh, and that's it. But again, this high school is enormous, it's beautiful. Um, so I think as far as schools, I can't really talk about the ratings too much, but you know, from the outside looking in, it looks like it would be a great place for your kids to go to school. Another thing about Sherwood is because it has developed so much in the last 20 or 30 years um, that everything just seems really new, really clean, really fresh, really well laid out. So you have a lot of parks um, in these different neighborhoods um, that have you know a, a lot of great kind of amenities as far as parks go with sand pits and you know very well kept fields and um, you know really great playgrounds and things like that. So you know the parks in town are great, but especially along Highway 99, you have a lot of uh, big box stores, restaurants, you have Langer's, which is like a family fun center with bowling and arcade and things like that. You have all this development. Uh, you know, you have your Target and your Walmart and um, kind of everything that you would need very close in town um, right along Highway 99. And again, it's all been developed so recently that everything has a very cohesive aesthetic to it, um, which is kind of a small detail. But, you know, if you look at other suburbs in the Portland metro area, especially ones that are bigger, um, like Beaverton or Gresham, for example, you know, these were developed over, you know, several periods of time. And uh, it's, you know, you could kind of be in one area, drive into another. It doesn't really feel like you're still in the same area. Uh, but being in Sherwood, everything feels very cohesive and um, kind of very similar throughout all of Sherwood, even in some of the older areas, because they extend very naturally into each other. Um, so as far as just kind of the overall feel and aesthetic of it, it's really a very nice place. I think the downside of it is it probably is a little bit sleepier. It might be a little boring, you know, for somebody who's looking for a little faster pace uh, area, a place with a little more action, more activities, more things to do, somewhere that's closer to the city, like closer to downtown Portland, you know, Sherwood's not going to check a lot of those boxes, but if you are looking for more of a small town, you know, that is relatively close to the city, but removed enough to where you have kind of a small town community feel, um, Sherwood would be a great place to take a look. In terms of price, I think price per square foot, and just across the board, you can get some relative affordability, you know, compared to a lot of places around the Portland metro area. Generally, the closer you get to the city, so like the closer you get to downtown Portland, um, the more expensive homes are or the higher the cost per square foot is. Um, I think the median sale price is a little bit higher, you know, tends to kind of be a little bit higher than average in Sherwood, but you have a much higher quantity of larger four or five bedroom homes, you know, 2,800, 3,200 square feet. So the houses that you can get there are really big, really nice. You have a lot of smaller lots because anything, you know, that's built in the last 25, even 30 years, the lots are going to be smaller. So the homes are kind of packed in in some of these neighborhoods, but these are generally really nice, really big homes. Uh, and the median sale price is $610,000. Right now, the median list price is $700,000. So being a smaller area, 20,000 people, it's about four square miles. Um, those numbers can be skewed a little bit based on the housing stock overall and the available inventory. So I think right now the median sale price, or I'm sorry, uh, the median list price is $700,000. You know, 30, 60 days from now, it could be $640,000, could be $750,000. So looking at that median sale price might give you a, a little bit of a clear indication, or if you look at it over, 
you know three or four months even though the market is you know kind of changing at a rapid pace right now um, looking over a little bit of a longer time horizon could give you a little bit of a clearer picture but I think the prices do skew a little bit higher than some areas in the metro area some suburbs in the metro area but for what you're getting for your dollar you're getting more home you're getting um, kind of a cleaner more cohesive suburban type feel um, compared to some other areas so for somebody to look at Sherwood and you know put that high on their list, I think they're gonna be looking for a very specific type of area. There are a lot of suburbs throughout Portland where you can, you know, kind of, uh, you know, they're, they're pretty interchangeable. I mean, you know, you could get the same thing in Beaverton as you could get in Tiger. You could get the same thing in a Westland as you could in Lake Oswego. So there's a lot of suburbs that have a lot of crossover and similarity, uh, but Sherwood definitely stands out um, as kind of its own unique place. And if this is an area that is interesting to you, make sure to give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video, and we can talk more about Sherwood or other areas that might fit your criteria. We can talk about a game plan and your timeline and get you set out on the right track. Um, and if this video is helpful, make sure to hit the like button. That helps, helps us out a lot. And if you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. Once again, we really appreciate you watching. We'll talk to you next time.